Now that he has killed the latest immigration bill, what does Donald Trump actually want to do at the border? Well, if he wins in November, Axios is reporting he would push the National Guard, the FBI, and local law enforcement into a campaign of mass deportations reaching into the millions. Joining me now to discuss this and more, Juanita Tolliver is here, MSNBC political analyst and host of the What A Day podcast, and Stuart Stevens joins us, a veteran of the Mitt Romney and George W. Bush presidential campaigns. He is now with the Lincoln Project. His new book, The Conspiracy to End America, Five Ways My Old Party is Driving Our Democracy to Autocracy, is out. Now, it is a horror movie in the making, and we're living it, Stuart what exactly is Donald Trump doing here? It would be devastating. Yes, it's inhumane, but it would be devastating to our economy, especially if you think about our labor shortage. People across the country agree we have an illegal immigration problem. But is what Trump's offering what people are looking for? Well, if there's a silver lining here. It's the last time Donald Trump uh, said all this stuff. He did a terrible job <laughs> compared to the Obama administration as far as deporting people. Um, you know, he was attacked in the primary by DeSantis about this. Obama uh, deported, you know, millions more than Donald Trump did. Um, so there's always this question of, the, you know, sort of where does cruelty meet incompetence or cruelty get blunted by incompetence? Um, but, you know, there's just this complete mean-spiritedness about this. I mean, let's don't forget, like, when I joined the Republican Party in 1980, when Bush ran against Reagan in the primary, they had a debate in Texas. You just go look at it. It's on YouTube. Which they got in the argument over who was more liberal on immigration. And Ronald Reagan signed a bill that allowed everyone in the country before 1983 to be legal. And that used to be where the Republican Party was. And you can say everything you want about legal versus illegal, but there's really just a, a sort of anti-American, this is, he talks about the blood of the country or something being, this is something that is it's not about the border, it's not about immigration, it's about some sort of mean-spirited white nationalist thread that runs through Donald Trump. It's mean, and to Stewart's point, Juanita, it's unsuccessful. Donald Trump talked a really big game about the border when he was in office, and he didn't do very well. Obama was tougher on the border than Trump was. What does the Biden administration need to do to start winning this narrative? Because right now, immigration is a big vulnerability for them. I think the key here is humanity. And I think when, as Stuart pointed out, you have a white supremacist policy idea thrown out by a candidate who absolutely wants to be an authoritarian dictator, like that is the, do the inverse and complete opposite of that. And what we've seen from the polling is that the more humane policies are what appear appeal across the spectrum. I mean, take independence, for example. Majority of them are anti the policies we're seeing out of Texas and Florida, where those governors are shipping migrants across the country, they see that as inhumane. They see that as harmful. But what they do support is better asylum processes that streamline everything and make it more efficient and make it faster and make it more humane. So this kind of approach where we see where Trump is proposing the mass, um, the mass uh, uh, just detainment of individuals, which sounds off alarm bells in my mind, knowing how that process has appeared repeatedly throughout history, throughout the world, how harmful that is, is just going to create an authoritarian hellscape that is going to inflict trauma and harm as far and wide as he possibly could. Stuart, House Republicans are going to try again tomorrow to impeach DHS Secretary Mayorkas. In theory, Mike Johnson would not be bringing this to a vote unless he had the votes. And it's kind of do or die tomorrow, seeing that it's the special election in New York and Democrats could pick up a seat. What do you think we're in for? You know, what kills me is, uh, you know, the Republican Party at one time actually had a, a, a certain purchase on competence. And, and this is just the most sort of childish display of sort of using the House representatives for these spiteful temper tantrums. This isn't going to do anything. I mean, if they do pass this, it's not going to go anywhere. And they admit it's not high crimes or misdemeanor. So it's just kind of your mama, too. You know, you impeach President Trump, so we're going to find somebody in the Biden administration to impeach. I, I, you know, it's right up there with Hunter Biden's laptop. This is a non-governing party. 
And sometimes that's amusing and sometimes it's sad. But when you come to stuff like funding for Ukraine and the border, it's tragic. And uh, there's just absolutely nothing you can say to make these people act like serious adults. Okay, well, then my next question is, can be categorized as amusing, sad, puzzling, but, like, for real, I want the answer. Vladimir Putin is the least popular world leader. Taylor Swift is the most popular performer in the world. We know that Donald Trump and many Republicans are cozying up to Vladimir Putin while they're waging war against Taylor Swift. Juanita, and I am being dead serious, why would they do this? Like, what is the logic? I mean, it's all rooted in anti-American thoughts and feelings and sentiments, right? Like, that's the only reason why you would cozy up with a dictator like Putin, right? Like, there's no explanation for it. What I do find the most harmful about this is that they're doing it to follow Trump's lead, right? Like, that is why they will absolutely not let up on Mayorkas, for example. That is why they will continue with this harmful weaponization of government push that we're seeing across Congress that does not yield anything of substance to come through, including making sure that legislation that had been negotiated for months and months related to the border, related to foreign aid, fall apart because Donald Trump told them to. And so I kind of look at the Republican Party like, OK, whatever happens next, whatever implosions at the multiple levels within your party happens next, you all deserve it because you have you are clearing the way for somebody like Trump. You are continuously cowering to him. And so whatever happens to you, so be it.